Okay, guys, uh, here's another little video uh, for you today. Um, I am Chef Frank at North End High School, uh, Culinary Arts. Today, I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to show you how to make bagels. Make them at home. Very, very easy. So first off, you're going to have to kind of think ahead um, about a day. Because we need to make a poulash or a sponge. That's going to help us with our flavor. So we can do this the night before. And if you have a coolish kitchen, then you can let that uh, ferment overnight and then for the next day in the morning, you can start to make your bagels and mix the rest of the dough. Um, or you can put it in your refrigerator and uh, keep it overnight that way. Or if you want, if you're up nice and early in the morning, you could uh, get it going. Um, but you've got to give it at least eight hours, okay? So the first thing then would be to make the poulash. Now, I have 270 grams of water. Now, I'm going to just put that into a bowl. You've got to be pretty precise with the ingredients. So um, a scale is going to be a good idea here. I'm going to keep um, another 275 grams of water. I'm going to just put that to the side. And then um, I have my, my flour, and this is bread flour. I've divided it up into two batches. This one, 270 grams, that's going to go into this water. And the second one, we'll keep that until the sponge is ready. So we put those to the side. I have some salt here, about 17 grams of salt. That's going to go in later as well. And then I've got this stuff here. This is didactic um, malt. And what this does, and this would be optional, is it's going to help with getting that nice bagel color on the outside, that nice brown. And um, it basically is an enzyme that breaks down some of the flour into sugars, and the yeast loves the sugars, so it helps with the rise and stuff. This is a little difficult to get. So for my students, if you need any of this, if you want to use it, um, give me a shout, and I'll arrange to, to, for you to get some. In fact, I've got a little bit of it here. Um, if not, don't worry about it. You don't really need it. Uh, it just helps a little bit. What you can do is to use, maybe uh, to give a little flavor, um, I got a little bit of barley malt syrup. And you could put a little bit of that in, maybe into this mixture, you know, maybe a tablespoon or so. Um, but again, that won't happen until after the poulish is ready. And, uh, and this would work um, not as well as this, kind of two different um, um, products here. But it will give you that little bit of flavor. So I have the water and my flour. And then. Uh, Next thing I'm going to need is a little yeast. So I've got a container of yeast here. And I'm going to need um, a teaspoon of yeast altogether. But what I want to do is start with a quarter of the teaspoon. So take a quarter of the teaspoon, put it into my poolish or my sponge. The rest of it, the other three quarters, will go into this mix when I start to mix it. So we'll put that aside. And I keep this in the, in the refrigerator. Got a spoon here. You could use your hands as well or a fork, anything. You just want to kind of combine these two together, OK? Mix that in. Now, when that's just mixed together, it's pretty simple. And I can maybe use my spoon here just to scrape off my, don't want to waste any of it. Let that fall back in there. Now, this poulash, or sponge, is what's going to uh, ferment and it's going to bring out our flavor. So we want to cover this with some saran wrap. I've got a piece here. Or if you have a lid, um, that would work as well. Now, if you're going to be um, 
not making it for a good, a good while, I would uh, put it in the refrigerator and let it um, ferment slowly that way. Or you could leave it out, let it get started, and then stick it in the refrigerator. It's kind of going to bubble up, and I will see that tomorrow, or um, when we get mixing, okay? So we've got to wait now for the, for the sponge, and uh, we'll be back in a little bit. So we've had our sponge or our poulash um, sitting overnight. I let it uh, stay out in the kitchen for a while till it started getting a little bubbly, and then I put it back in the refrigerator, keep it nice and cool uh, so it didn't go too crazy. So now you can see it's got nice bubbles on the top, and you start to, to get that um, fermenting uh, taste or flavor or smell, and that's what's going to help us with some flavor in our bagels. So <coughs> next stage is going to be adding the rest of our ingredients. So we're going to take this sponge and we're going to put it into our bowl here. There we go. Just make sure we don't leave any of it behind. I would put this right into water to, uh, to clean it uh, so you doesn't uh, dry and gets uh, get really hard to clean that. And the next thing we're going to do is we have the rest of our water. And you'll see that in the ingredient list. And that's uh, 270 um, grams of water. And we just add that in there. And then <coughs> to this, we, are, we have our flour here. We have our water and we have our sponge or poulash. And now we are going to add a little bit of yeast in there. The total amount of yeast for this recipe um, is, a, is a one tablespoon or a one teaspoon. So what we'll want to do, we've taken a quarter of a teaspoon already to make the poulash. So we want one and three quarters um, left. So Measure it out here. So that's the half. And then we got our quarter. And you want to keep your um, yeast dry and in a cool spot. So we have that in here, and I'm just going to kind of mix it in a little bit. And now we can add our flour. That's the rest of our flour. And our dietetic malt here. And then we have our salt. I'm going to mix this a little bit and then we'll add in the salt. So I put it on our mixer. You could do this by hand easily. <coughs> but I've got this nice and handy here. Now, when you are... Uh, using your mixer to mix dough, be pretty careful. Uh, dough is a tough thing, and do not overload your, your machine or you will burn it out. Um, and I've done that a few times. So read the instructions. Make sure that you do are not putting more dough in than what your machine can handle. And also, you'll want to use the hook attachment. So I'll just move these guys out of the way here on my guard and we'll just start, start it off nice and slow just to kind of start the mixing I'm going to mix this in two spots I'm going to mix it just for a couple of minutes then I'm going to let it sit um, and that will hydrate it'll, it'll let the flour take up the water and then we'll finish off the, the mixing then after that so that hydration will probably give it maybe 10 minutes. I'm going to stop it there. I'm going to add my salt in. Now you do want to be careful. Um, don't put the salt and the yeast on top of each other. Or if you have the water in there, um, 
don't just throw all the salt in and then the yeast on the other side. You, you could kill off your, your yeast. So mix a little bit and then add your salt in. Some, some people even wait a while before in, during the mixing and then add it in, but just, just be careful with it. Okay, so that's mixing nicely now. And you're never going to be turning this up full when you're mixing dough. You're just going to destroy the machine and, and destroy the dough. So just a nice steady, steady mix. And we're going to make, let this mix for maybe two minutes. And then we'll turn it off. We're going to let it sit for about half, uh, or about five, five minutes or so. And then we'll finish off the rest of the mix. Okay, so our machine's mixed there for a couple of minutes. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to let it sit. Um, and it, it won't have come together looking like a nice dough yet. That's going to just take some time. So this is just, just going to let this sit. Um, I said five minutes, ten minutes even. And you'll see that uh, it will help the whole process. Now in the meantime, I have here what they call bagel boards. And um, just made these up. Um, it's burlap, piece of, of uh, two by four. I'm going to soak these, so when we, when we make our bagels, we're actually going to be the start of the cooking process. They're going to start on the top of this board, and in fact, upside down. And then we're going to flip them over, and uh, they'll cook the rest of the way. So I'm kind of uh, uh, looking forward to using these. All right, so we've taken, uh, it's done, it's <coughs> kneading in the machine there. I'm just going to take it and kind of give it a little bit of a, hand knead here, <coughs> like our dough. Now, next thing we want to do is just divide it down into some weights. <coughs> so I'm going to aim for about three and a half ounces for each one. Make sure I have my scales on the correct uh, unit. There we go there. That's a little bit too much. Take a tiny bit more up. <coughs> there we go, it's about three and a half. Get on. So we'll work our way through this here. Getting those uh, little tiny bit off this one. And then we're just going to form these up. And we'll see how many we get here. Now you'll want to be pretty precise, you know, because if you have different sizes, obviously your bagels are going to be different sizes. And, uh, and you want to want these to look good. So having uniformity is, is part of the game. Now this is pretty cheap also to make. If you think about it, we're not using a lot of flour. We're using a tiny bit of uh, yeast little bit of salt. Um, so each bagel is going to be very, um, very economical. Okay, looks like we'll have a little bit here. Uh, we'll just make a small little guy. So got them to this stage. Um, we can now go ahead and form, form them up. They are going to um, sit down for a while. They've got to proof up again. And I have a tray here. I've put a little bit of oil on the tray, just a very uh, light uh, spray. <coughs> and that will help them uh, from, from sticking. So to form these guys up, you just have to roll them out. Just like a little snake. And take one end, pop it over your hand, 
and roll that together. And don't worry if you don't if they're not even. So roll them out. Pop a piece over. Seal it up. What you will not want to do is to add any flour to your table or anything because um, they're not going to stick together. And after these have proofed up, our next thing is to boil them. And they're going to drop into boiling water. And, uh, oops, made a little mess there. That water will, ha will add a little bit of our barley syrup in there just to kind of give it a nice little flavor. Now, you could also round them up, put your thumbs in and make a hole that way, but you know what, this way is just pretty easy. There we go. I was forgetting what I was doing there. And you want to space them out a little bit because they, they are going to um, proof a little bit and rise, so you don't want them sticking together on you. A little bit more. And this is a fun thing to do, you know. Um, I said it's very inexpensive. Kind of a great little exercise maybe with your brothers or sisters or there's a family get thing make your own pretzels after you've made them you know you could bag them up and freeze them keep them for after you could if you wanted to at this stage bag these up freeze them freeze them on a tray, then put them in a bag, then you could take them out at a later date and uh, let them proof up, keep them covered all the time. That way you can make maybe a bigger batch of dough. But you know, there's nothing like just making your own bread or your own dough. Or bagels or pretzels, pretzels very similar to these. We could really make these into pretzels if we wanted to. Um, the process of the boiling, we would use um, caustic solution like a lye. It's kind of dangerous stuff, but uh, baking soda in the water will kind of give us some a bit of the same effect. And looks like I have about 14 here. So they're probably costing um, somewhere around three cents a piece. When you buy your flour in big bags, that is. And we've got this little small one here. Okay, so these are going to um, be covered. We're going to let them sit, uh, let them come up in size, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and do the boiling. Okay, so now <coughs> we are at the second uh, part of our um, making our bagel. So I have here some water, and I just had cooked off some more there, but. Um, and into this, I added a little bit of um, my barley syrup. Um, honey would do. A little drop of molasses would do. Something just to kind of give it a little flavor. And then you're going to take each of the bagels here, and we just put them right into the water. Just like that. 
course, be careful that you don't uh, burn yourself or anything here. And uh, you want to have the water boiling. This is just a little touch below boiling. And we just want to give it um, just a couple of minutes. You let it go on one side, and then you flip it over and do it on the other side. Again, be careful, use, maybe use a slotted spoon. And they are almost ready now. Put them onto our tray. Making sure that we get rid of any excess water. So I kind of give it a little shake. And now the next part is putting our toppings on. All right, so toppings. I've got some sesame seeds. I've got some salt. This is some dried onion, dried... Um, garlic. So basically, gently, you just turn them over. Get it on there, get it to kind of stick a little bit. I think I'll do a few of these. It will be onion to start with. Just be gentle all the time, okay? And then, uh, maybe a little bit of dried garlic. You could shake this on if you wanted to. I don't want to put too much. Oh, got the little guy here. And then we have our sesame seeds. Nice coating there. Get a little bit more on that one. Maybe we'll put a little bit of onion. So you can kind of play around with it a bit. Get some onion there. A little bit of salt, maybe. This is some sea salt. And maybe, I think I'll just put a little sprinkle of onion on a couple of these guys. You can use, uh, well, you could use anything really, but uh, maybe some black sesame seeds, stuff like that. All right, so that's that part done. Let's put these to the end. Now it's time to get them in the oven. So I have here some bagel boards. These have been steeping. What we're going to do is to take the bagels, turn them upside down onto the board. And then they're going to go into the oven on the board for about oh, six or seven minutes. And then uh, we'll turn them over, taking them off the board. And we got our last board here. Now, for those of you that are in the area here, if you are some of the students, if you're interested in the bagel, bo bagel boards, um, I can uh, get some for you. Of course, we'd have to charge a little bit, but uh, 
I'll get that information on how much it costs us to make them. So next thing, into the oven. So we'll take these boards, put them right in. Boards are wet, so you're going to make a little bit of steam, so you want to be careful of your hands there. And um, if you have a, have a pizza stone in your oven, uh, that would be perfect for, um, for cooking these on. If not, a cookie sheet would work, um, and you can still use the, the boards and put them on. But the pizza stone is going to be your, your best bet. So we'll give those a few minutes. And we'll check back. Okay, now we're going to turn over our bagels. So, so we just gently, there we go, there's one. Don't forget to have a hot or a dry towel. There we go, there. Bagels cook out the rest of the way. Let's go and check our bagels. Oh, I think they might be ready. And we'll get the peel. I don't think they look too bad at all. I'm going to put them right onto a cooling rack. Now you can make them bigger. These were the three and a half ounce, um, and even a half an ounce will make quite a difference. But I think these are, you know, these are big enough. Okay, so we have our our bagels are <coughs> okay. Our bagels are ready here. They're pretty hot. And uh, let me move them over here and you get like a better close-up of them. Well, I know I should be waiting until... Um, they are cold, but you know, give me like a little cut open here. They are hot. Usually, you could put a bit of cream cheese on them. Uh, I'm partial to butter, as you guys know, and that butter is just melting in. And I'm going to tell you guys how, how they taste. Mm. So, bagels taste great. Hopefully, you give it a try. If, um, if you're interested in um, the bagel boards or whatever, uh, send me an email. I'll put the email address down underneath. And... Um, I'll find out uh, how much they will cost us to make them and stuff. And uh, I'm going to enjoy this. So thank you for watching the latest video. I'm Chef Frank Murphy from North End High School. And uh, talk to you later.